Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at the trajectory of the sensory pathways within the brain, correlate that with the trajectory of the motor pathways and finish off with a brief discussion about the pathophysiology of certain types of lacuna infarct. So the view that we've got here um, is we're looking at um, a 3D representation of the brain derived from uh, MRI. Um, and we can see we're looking at the right hemisphere, so here's the frontal lobe, temporal lobe, occipital lobe, and we can see very clearly the central sulcus just here. So anterior to the central sulcus, we have the precentral gyrus, remember, that is the site of the primary motor cortex. And behind the central sulcus, we have the postcentral gyrus, which is the site of the primary sensory cortex. And in this video, um, I, I'm just going to be showing you the pathways related to the lower limb. And the reason for that is that if I showed all the pathways coming from the upper limbs, trunk and the face, it would be way too busy and we wouldn't be able to follow it very easily. So I've just focused down on the pathways from the lower limb. <clears throat> um, so what we're going to do is just slice down through this brain a little bit. And now we can see that the fibres associated with the precentral gyrus we've got here in this light blue colour, and those associated with the postcentral gyrus we've got in this purple colour. And so the blue fibres are upper motor neurons. These are fibres of the corticospinal tract, which are originating in the motor cortex of the precentral gyrus and descending down. Fibres in purple are third-order sensory fibres coming from the thalamus and ascending up to the postcentral gyrus, up to the primary sensory cortex. And if I show you the anterior view here, you can see that um, they're going to the medial cortex, so the sensory fibres are going to the medial portion of the sensory cortex and the motor fibres are coming from the medial portion of the motor cortex, so that correlates to the lower limb. So what we're going to do now is follow this down even further. Um, if we look at the sagittal view just here, we can see the trajectory of these fibres down through the deep white matter, and we can see that that topography is maintained with the blue motor fibres running anteriorly and the purple sensory fibres running posteriorly. So let's now slice down through the brain until we get to about the level of the thalamus. So we're going down now through the internal capsule. So this is the, this is the internal capsule that we're passing through. Um, and we can see quite nicely starting to appear, if you look at the transverse section, top right, the V-shape of the internal capsule. And we can see very nicely those blue motor fibres running in the posterior limb. Furthermore, we can start to see that the purple third-order sensory fibres have originated in the thalamus. So if we zoom in here, here is the internal capsule, the V-shape of it, and this grey matter here is the thalamus, which is of course the origin of these third-order sensory fibres, these thalamocortical fibres. As we continue to descend down through the brain, we should see, start to see the second-order sensory pathways. Okay, So now, if you look here, in fact I'm going to go all the way down, if you look here, we can see the second order sensory pathways. And I'll just adjust the view very slightly here and zoom in a little bit. In red, we've got the medial lemniscus. And in green, we've got the spinothalamic tract. So the medial lemniscus and the spinal, spinothalamic tract run through the brainstem all the way up to the thalamus. And it is at this point here, so if I zoom right in here, it is at this point here where the second order sensory fibres synapse on the third order neurons within the thalamus. And remember that the second order ones have decussated, and that decussation has occurred lower down either in the brainstem in the case of the dorsal column pathway or the spinal cord in the case of the spinothalamic pathway. Either way, these are second order fibres terminating on third order neurons within the thalamus. And we can see the medial lemniscus sits medially and the spinothalamic tract sits laterally. If we go up to the level of the midbrain, 
we can see uh, very very nicely if I zoom in just a little bit here whoops if we zoom in we can see very nicely our motor fibers there running within the cerebral peduncles and we can see our sensory pathways there running in the more dorsal portions of the midbrain so to zoom back out let's follow these lemnisci in the coronal plane so if we look at the coronal plane here we can see the spinal spinothalamic tract here in green running through the mid, the uh, medulla probably at this level and if i make my way um kind of anteriorly you can see them coursing upwards so here they are the spinothalamic tract and the internal capsule sorry and the uh medial lemniscus ascending they're ascending until they get to the level of the thalamus so the thalamus is here and here on each side and when we get to the thalamus beautifully you can see these third order sensory fibers streaming upwards towards the um sensory cortex so there at this point here is where the medial lemniscus and spinothalamic tract are synapsing on thalamic nuclei and then the third order fibers are going up and remember that these third order fibers running from the thalamus to the cortex themselves run within the internal capsule and if we go a little bit further anteriorly in this coronal view we then see the corticospinal tract coming into view okay and that just reminds us that the corticospinal tract is anterior to the sensory pathways so we've looked at that then in the coronal view in the transverse view and in the sagittal view there <clears throat> now the final point i want to make is to talk a little bit about so-called lacuna infarcts lacuna strokes and what we're going to do is just ascend a little bit up through the slices here i'm just going to change the tool that i'm using okay so lacuna infarcts are small infarcts occurring deep within the brain and many of their um, clinical effects are down to damage to the deep white matter pathways there is a bewildering number of lacuna stroke syndromes however the two easiest for us to understand are the so-called pure motor and pure sensory syndromes if we start off considering how a pure motor stroke may occur so how a pure motor lacuna stroke may occur what I can do is, is show you the size of the largest lacuna infarct, which is about 15 millimeters. So this brush here that I'm using is about 15 millimeters in diameter. Well, it is precisely 15 millimeters in diameter. And so if I place it on the um, motor fibers here, you can imagine if there were an infarct in this region, we would get purely motor symptoms okay purely motor symptoms and remember that the motor fibers as they course within the internal capsule are supplied by the lenticulostriate arteries which are branches of the middle cerebral artery so occlusion of the lenticulostriate vessels could lead to a pure motor stroke due to damage to these motor fibers running within the internal capsule now if I place my lacoon back here in the thalamus you can see that I would specifically destroy the sensory fibers and we would have a pure sensory stroke now the thalamus receives its blood supply from a number of branches of the posterior cerebral artery so therefore if one of those were occluded we would get a pure sensory stroke now there is a third syndrome recognized which is sensory motor and you can imagine how that might occur because this region is a watershed in terms of blood supply it's not beyond the realms of possibility that we could involve both motor and sensory fibers and this would be a sensory motor stroke okay so so that's just a little me attempting to give you a little explanation about how pure motor pure sensory or sensory motor lacuna stroke syndromes may occur uh, that's all i've got to say really so thank you for listening